One is a personal fitness trainer who at one point was an athlete in high school in the suburbs of Chicago. But today, he's a personal fitness trainer with many loyal clients at a prestigious gym in the heart of Chicago. He's also an avid yoga practitioner and he loves Indian food. <laughs> the second is a building engineer. He's also a devoted father and husband his early days were turbulent growing up on the south side of Chicago. But today he comes to work every morning with a smile on his face as he skillfully fixes things in a high-end apartment building. The third is a celebrity hairstylist who has done countless New York Fashion Week fashion shows and has also been on America's Next Top Model. He has the reputation of being a hair god. However, he's also a talented artist who during his youth wanted to actually enroll in a fine arts school. So what do these three guys have in common? Well, they're all pretty good looking and you'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> However, the main or important commonality that they share is that none of them have gone to college and all of them have been trained at vocational or trade schools. And they've all had long-term careers that they're actually passionate about. So that's the theme of today's talk. It's vocational education and training, which is a type of education that I have never enrolled in. And it's also a type of education that I'm sure a lot of this audience hasn't engaged with much either. But before I delve into vocational ed, allow me to ask a question to the audience. What is the purpose of an education? You see, scholars and philosophers have thought about this for years, and they've come up with many goals. Some people believe the purpose of an education is to help us remove the erroneous tendencies in our minds or to remove long-standing prejudices. Others believe that vocational education is, or education in general is what can bring out life's truths or to extend human knowledge or also to bring us to a state of freedom. And in fact, education, many people also believe, is to help us become better citizens. And I think all of these various goals are true and valid. However, I think that there's one thing that's missing on this list. I think most of us can agree in this room that we become educated in order to work or in order to fulfill some type of productive role in society. And we're able to do this by actually engaging in some type of hands-on training, right? As Aristotle has said, anything that we have to learn to do, we learn by the actual doing of it. And ideally, this is what vocational programs do. In a short period of time, they train individuals to be able to fulfill some type of occupation. And they do this by employing things like hands-on training and apprenticeships, so that individuals can take what they've learned in the classroom and apply it to real-world situations. So then the first question for tonight is this. Why is it that this type, of this type of practical education, which leads people directly into job pathways, it's so stigmatized, not only in the United States, but all over the world. I mean, think about it. What do you think about when you're thinking about a vocational education? Many people think the following, and they're not very good things, right? Some people believe that students go into vocational education if they're troublemakers or low achievers. Other people believe that vocational education is for those individuals who don't want to go to college or who could never get in. And vocational education is often also thought to be the type of training that prepares individuals for manual labor, low wage jobs, or jobs that somehow make us dirty in some way, right? So a McKinsey consulting firm study recently found that nearly two thirds of youth from around the world, except from Germany, believe that vocational tracks are less valued by society. We've come to a situation where vocational education is not only considered to be a lesser kind of option for education, but it's also considered to be the secondary kind of option in terms of, in comparison to college. So we've become so consumed by this notion that vocational education is not very beneficial for students that we've really come to disregard it because we believe that every student must go to college. However, tonight, I want to actually tell you why I think we need to take a second look at vocational education and why I think that we need to start identifying its benefits. 
Various benefits have been cited in relation to vocational education. Many high school students have said that engaging in vocational courses actually makes the process of learning much more engaging. Vocational education is also associated with higher graduation rates among at-risk students. And it's also able to teach students or develop in students problem-solving skills, which are highly valued by almost all employers. Vocational education is also associated with higher earnings potential, and it also teaches students skills for high-demand jobs, including those in the high-tech and STEM field. And vocational education is also useful for a wide range of students. You see, it's a good option for those who don't think that college is a great fit, and they still want to go to some type of post-secondary educational opportunity or pathway. And it's also great for the student who might want to take some time off in between high school and college because they want to get, gain some real world experience. And it can also be useful for the student who knows they want to go to college because it can add depth to their academic experience. Let's think about it this way. If somebody knows that they want to become a leader or a CEO one day, then it could be useful for them to have gained some experience in all parts of their business model. For example, in manufacturing, before they actually get to this leadership position. And you see, vocational education is not only useful at the individual level, it's also necessary for our economy. Our economy needs more skilled workers. The Manpower Group's annual talent shortage survey for the third year in a row has indicated that the number one shortage that has been identified by employers is associated with the skilled trades. The second and third are associated with engineering occupations and technician occupations. And interestingly, all three of these are actually, are, well, actually require some type of vocational skills training. Our economy also, studies have also indicated that our economy is going to actually be missing millions of individuals with vocational credentials in the coming years. And this is actually gonna be a problem because the reality is there's a lot of projected growth in sectors like manufacturing, healthcare, green technologies, and information technologies. And the job growth is going to require, or the jobs that are going to grow, are going to require a, a credentials, vocational credentials, as opposed to a four-year college degree. And so it kind of does our economy a disservice if we're only putting out all of these college graduates, but we don't have enough skilled workers. Allow me to turn to the manufacturing sector for a second. Most of us can remember that the manufacturing sector has experienced many changes, right? We know that manufacturing has experienced a lot of job loss as a result of globalization and outsourcing along with the recession. However, recently there has been a lot of growth in manufacturing, and this is a result of an aging workforce and advances in technology. The rise of things like digital manufacturing and advanced manufacturing are actually creating a situation where jobs are starting to come back to the United States. And this is really exciting because we can really strengthen this part of our economy and put more people to work. However, we are, well, our current workforce, there isn't enough people with the correct vocational skills. So one study has recently found that in the manufacturing sector, we are going to need 3.5 million manufacturing jobs to be filled. However, two million are likely to remain unfilled as a result of the skills gap or not having enough people in the talent pool to fill these jobs. The sec or in addition to this, in Chicago alone, there are between 30 and 50,000 open manufacturing jobs today. And this is also res a result of this skills gap. So some of you are probably wondering what kind of jobs are these that are open in the manufacturing sector, right? Well, one of the jobs is welding, and welding, welders actually make quite a bit of money. They can make upwards seventy dollars to $100,000 a year, and that's actually more than some of my fellow master's student friends are making today. <laughs> so we can kind of see that there are some high-quality job pathways available in the manufacturing sector, and it really seems like to be able to continue strengthening our economy, we should really get more people into these pathways. However, how do we do this, right? I mean, it, we're going to have to get behind vocational education to be able to do this, to be able to get more people to fill these jobs. And to do that, we're gonna actually have to really work hard on getting over our negative perceptions 
of vocational education. So my main question for tonight is this. How do we reconceptualize vocational education? And how do we get over these negative perceptions? Well, before I end my talk tonight, I'm going to put forth three suggestions. The first suggestion is that I think that we need to really get a lot more people educated on what's going on with vocational ed in the US and also teach people and tell people about the high quality job pathways that are available upon graduation from vocational training programs. PR and marketing campaigns are going to be huge for this and I'm actually involved with this type of marketing campaign at World Business Chicago. We've actually done something called the 1,000 Jobs Campaign, which is raising the profile of the manufacturing sector and workforce training and um, vocational training programs. And so what this does is it can tell more people and teach more people that there are many great, high-quality job pathways available in this sector. The second suggestion that I have for tonight is to develop and promote high-powered high partnerships. And this, is, this would be in between training programs and high-powered companies, like the existing ones between training programs at IBM, Cisco, and Siemens. Right now, I would like to talk about the example of IBM. IBM has actually made a relationship and connected with New York Public Schools, and they have created something called the P-TECH Schools. P-TECH Schools actually provides dual training to students, so that students take traditional academic courses, like algebra and English, and then they also take courses that are associated with the career theme. So in this case, it's the computer sciences. Students spend a little bit more time in the classroom and eventually finish their associate's degrees. And then IBM has actually created clear pathways between the training program and the company itself so that individuals can directly get jobs within the company. And what this does for us is it shows us that high power companies like IBM value vocational skills, and if they do, maybe we should also. The third suggestion I have is something called the maker movement. And the maker movement is where non-vocationally oriented schools, like private schools and universities, are implementing things called fab labs, or high-tech laboratories. In these laboratories, students are able to employ or utilize vocational skills to actually manufacture things with their own hands. And this is really exciting for two reasons. Because, first of all, it removes the division between traditional academic courses and vocational courses. However, it also brings vocational education to a wider, more diverse group of students. So hopefully, if we can get behind these types of campaigns and these types of programs, we can start slowly getting into a situation where more of us have more positive perceptions of vocational ed as opposed to negative, and we can get more people into high quality job pathways, just like my three friends have in Chicago.